Hello, friends. Welcome to the JV Show. This is Jorge. And this is Viv. And Happy New Year. Happy New Year, guys. Happy 2024. 2024. Do, yes. you, do you have... um? Do you have issues with writing dates or no? No, I don't. I used to. You know, in school, you used to write the date in the top corner of your paper every single day. And then afterwards, when you have to change, you'll like make mistakes for the first like couple weeks. Uh, Yeah, two weeks solid. Yeah. Yeah, Now I feel like I don't write things by hand as often enough. So it it doesn't become like a muscle memory to write that date like that anymore. I think everything's on computers now. So it's like not required. Mm -hmm. But even if I type stuff out on... Oh, actually, no, I do. I have been typing 2023. I just realized a bunch of stuff I did this week, oh, I put 2023. Fucked. I put 2023-01-04 the whole time. Whatever program you use doesn't put automatically just put the current date? No, these are my own notes. Um, yeah, like I have to take some notes and stuff, and I'll put, I'll put the date. And then, yeah, I guess I'm still used to the 2023 date. I actually didn't even notice that. I saw this thing online where it was like talking about how Chinese people or Asian people don't like the number four. Mm. So it showed this guy writing like the date and he went like 2023. And right before he wrote four, he was like sweating really hard and he wrote three A. <laughs> <laughs> you know, on that same note, you know how here in um, the buildings, they don't have floor 13? Mm? Wait, is that not a thing? Okay, I'm not sure, but I know in China they don't have the fourth floor. Yeah, I know that. I didn't know they had. Okay, I didn't me, know that was a thing. Here. Yeah, but I know in China they would just not put floor. the fourth floor. Yeah. Um. It's a missing. It's the thirteenth floor. It's a missing thing, right? Oh. Um, Do they have that here? Yeah, the thirteenth floor is a designation of a of. A level of a multi-level building that's often omitted in countries where the number 13 is considered unlucky. Uh, omitting the 13th floor may take a variety of forms. The most common include denoting what would otherwise be considered the 13th floor as level 4. So, like, like I actually see this quite often where they, like, they'll have the numbers and you don't notice because they're perfectly, like, in line. Everything's in sync and looks mm. nice. And then if you try to find 13, it's not there. What the fuck? I've never noticed this before. Yeah. But uh, I was going to say, like, I was just in Spain and they don't have that. Like they have the thirteenth floor. Oh. But yeah, they use twelve A, twelve B, or fourteen A or fourteen or something <laughs> like that. So they just skipped that. I was like, oh that's really uh like it's very auspicious, I guess. And very it's very superstitious. Kind of, it's kinda of funny that they're just avoiding <coughs> calling it the thirteenth floor when it's still the thirteenth fucking floor. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's like here, panels from an elevator. Oh, this is a picture on Wikipedia, guys. Panels from an elevator in a residential apartment building in Shanghai. Floors 4, 13, and 14 are missing because of the similarity between the pronunciation of the word 4 and death and chest. Yeah. So that's the the whole reason why they don't have the 4 thing. But yeah, like did you, I, I was surprised you didn't know. I thought that'd be like... I knew that about Chinese, oh, like yeah, in Chinese places, thing. but I didn't know about the 13 part. Yeah. Huh. I wonder yeah. if you're Chinese and you're born on April 4th. Like, yeah. And your birthday ended on like 1994 or some shit. You are the, how unlucky would you the feel? The harbinger of death. <laughs> no, it'd be the worst if you're 2004, April 4. It could be 444. Oh, yeah, right. Right? It'll be 04, 04, 04. Oh, shit, yeah. Right? Which is weird because like you only had to be born 16 days and later. And on your fourth birthday? Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But you, it's weird because like you literally have to be born 16 days later and it's hilarious. It'll be 420. Oh yeah. So it's literally that's the only differentiation, actually, <laughs> which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, we'll um. So this podcast, we're just gonna do uh because we haven't. Oh, done a new one. keyboard came in. Yeah, I'm a new keyboard. Actually, a lot of things have changed. But oh, anyways, sure. uh, we haven't done a recap. You know, not really a recap, but we just haven't been on a live podcast for a while. I think it's been like four weeks almost. Yeah, so we skipped a, a week because of music. We that week I was sick, and we wanted to post something related to the Christmas songs I made. And then the week, the two weeks after that was all um, the solo podcast. Mm-hmm. We were busy and we had to do solo ones. Um, so yeah, pretty much we haven't done one in a while. So we just want to get caught up uh, with each other and with you guys. So it's kind of like a dual thing. Um, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I will start this time. I have a lot. I don't know. I don't know how much you have to catch up on. But I have quite a bit. <coughs> um... First, my most sad one, I talked a little bit about this on the other podcast, uh, my solo one, is my finger injury. Mm -hmm. So I injured my finger during climb. And I was pretty sad about it because I was going through, I was sick that week and I couldn't work out that whole week. Like I was sick to the point I couldn't work out, which is pretty rare for me. 
Yeah. Even the, I, I love spreading that shit. So I'll still go to the gym anyways. Jesus Christ. You're yeah. those people. I know, right? It's great. Um, and Do you know what MERS is? MERS. Like, I think it's M E R S. That sounds very familiar. I saw this like, thing online where some people purposely don't write, don't wipe their benches when they use it because they're like, oh, if I feel tired, I'll sit down and I'll tell myself when I'm about to like reach failure that, oh my God, there's MERS on this bench. And so you don't like give oh. up too quick, too quickly. Apparently, it's some disease that can be spread through sweat. Oh no! Um, no, actually, I haven't really heard about that. To be honest. <laughs> um, just one second. No, it's not. Well, I mean, I've never heard. Of, I I think I've heard of that, but yeah, that wouldn't be why I not wipe it, wipe it down. I mean, it was. Would it be a good motivation if I was uh, dr- a germaphobe? I think. I think that's terrible. <laughs> But anyways, I went to physio for it because uh, I was concerned because I, I heard a pop. Pretty much what I was doing, I was doing like a, a climb and then grabbed a, a small hold. And then I think I was like transitioning my feet over and then I heard a pop in my hand. Oh my hand. God. Um, and it's actually surprisingly not the first time because I've done that to my wrist before. And that was annoying because that was like a whole month I had to take off. Yeah. Um, so I went to physio and he said it's not that bad, which is pretty good. He gave me this rehab putty. So I had to do a bunch of exercises on this every day. Did you have the same when you had your finger issue? No. Oh, so I re- rehab putty and then I had this like cold tape. I'm sure you had this, right? This cold tape thing. Yeah. Yeah. So that's just to cool down the inflammation. Prevent it from like swelling and shit. Yeah. Um, so I've been doing that. I just went back to the physio. It's pretty cool. He does a bunch of tests, like grip tests and like climb tests, like climb specific tests. So he has a block that's like a, like a grip that I would normally do when I'm climbing. And then it connects to another block and you just pull as hard as you can on it. And it'll give you like whatever the tension is. Right. Uh, so then you can differentiate between your right and left hand and then you can have well, metrics to like measure if you're like getting tough tired. shit to like need. Uh, I, so Putty's very funny um putty's like non-newtonian so that means like the more you push it the faster or the easier it is to push oh i see uh, or is it the other way i I actually forget it's, it's the other way it's, the yeah. harder yeah um so if you try to push it really really fast it's hard but if you slowly push it it's really easy if that makes sense like if it's a giant bar and then you, you try to like suddenly get it to a really small shape it's a bit harder but if you like slowly push it it'll be like pretty easy Oh, I can see what you mean. Yeah, so then, like, you can kind of change your intensity by the speed that you do the exercises in, which is pretty cool. Um, but right now, my finger's still feeling... So, like, I, I think it was about two weeks. It was still feeling... Um, it was still swollen. And then once the swelling went down, uh, it will only swell when I do some type of related activity. Uh, mm. So, like, I still go climbing. So, so the, the physio said, still do your normal activities, but... Uh, decrease the intensity and decrease the weight. So, for example, if I do deadlifts, I do like fifteen percent less, um, just because that's kind of a grip related thing. Uh, so that's what I've been doing lately, and I don't know. I was just sad about it, but I get it. It's injuries. A, a part of me wants to say like, there's a good out of it, and I guess there kind of is. Like, I'm more cognizant of warming up and shit before I do stuff. Uh huh. Uh, because I feel like for the most part, I don't really warm up much. Your physio say what was actually wrong. Uh, actually no, happened. not re- it's a pretty common climbing injury, so it's kind of hard for him to say like what it was and stuff. That like what exactly was the issue, but it was probably because I was cold when I was doing it. Um, so he he gave me some tips on like rehabbing it and uh, warm warm ups and stuff. So I guess the silver lining is that now I have like a path forward. Like I feel like I've had all a bunch of injuries throughout my life, but at least after each one. If I stick to a protocol, it won't happen again. Mm. Uh, so it is still kind of good in that sense. But yeah, it, it's been feeling kind of shitty. It's just like you feel useless and stuff. Like this is my yeah. dominant hand too, right? So like if I were to ever do a one-arm pull-up, it would be my right arm. right? Because it's so much more dominant than my left. Um, but it's slowly getting there. It's about like 80% strength compared to my left now. Yeah. Which is still off because it should be like say 150% yeah. strength of my left, right? Um, Did you have to do like wax soaks? No, uh, he didn't really. No, we didn't go there. Um, it's most. It's pretty much just a tendon thing. So mm. it's like it's called the pulley tendons. So like I, I feel like you your physio may have. Uh yeah. So it's the tendons are arched around your finger. Um, 
So if you guys search up pulley tendons, it's like you have your one long tendon and you have pulleys that go that like circ encircles your your finger from one mm. side to the other. And I probably like uh not tear, but I probably strained them. Um so that's the annoying part right now. The good part is that I did take a full week off cuz I went on vacation. Mm. Uh and if it doesn't heal by end of the month, I'm taking another 2 weeks off cuz I'm going on vacation again. So not By bad. then, I'm certain it will be healed. I hope. Do you have any other exercises that you were told to do? No, just those ones. He said, just keep doing those ones. Um, and then he said, just do your normal stuff as best you can. And then, obviously, if you st- it feels bad, then like lower your weight or lower your intensity. Because hmm. he said he wants to get me back to normal ASAP. So like you have to because it's not muscle; it's tendon. You have to just keep doing normal shit without hurting it. Yeah. Uh, whereas if it was muscle, you just have to literally take a break until it's healed and then right. go back from low weights up to high weights, right? Right. <clears throat> so, yeah. Um, another thing is, I feel like I've been sick forever. So Bro, me too. Yeah, that week I was sick. And then after that week, I always feel like there's phlegm. Like, after that week, my phlegm has been clear. So, mm-hmm. usually, like, if it's yellow or discolored green, yellow, green, or any, like, whiteness in it, mm-hmm. that's a sign of sickness or contagion Mm -hmm. but it's always been clear but i feel like i've always had phlegm in me like near the back of my throat or the top of my me too oh my god it feels like it's been there for like three weeks i think mine's been a little over a month now yeah it's it's just annoying right because like Whenever I do anything that, like, <laughs> exerts, you just feel it a little bit more. Yeah, like, when I play volleyball, I, like, cough once in a while, and I'm like, fuck, I swear. It's like I'm sick, but I'm not actually sick. Yeah. It's just, like, a lingering cough, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I swear everyone has it, because on my plane ride home, everyone was fucking coughing. <laughs> it was, uh, it was not good. I can tell I you heard, that. um, some people call this the 100-day, or 100 100-day cold. Cold, yeah. Yeah, yeah I, I, I can see that being a thing. I mean... I feel like there's nothing you can do about it. You just have to live your life still. I mean, yeah, you can't just like call in sick the whole time or like. Yeah, like we can't all just take. A, like, I know we just came back from COVID, but we can't all just take 100 days off now. Yeah, true. Right. Um, this is not doable right now. So, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like I've been sick for like a fucking long time. And it's kind yeah. of annoying. I swear it's like an actual. <coughs> you know how you know how COVID is a thing. I swear it's like something like that, but not exactly. Yeah, like it wasn't exaggerated to the point of covid but it's something yeah. like similar that everyone in the world is getting yeah like this linger and cough because i swear so many fucking people have it yeah like a lot a lot of people i read a reddit post about it yesterday about it yeah how somebody was like is it just me or is everyone in vancouver coughing and i've been coughing for months now and everyone in the post like oh it's not only you i'm in toronto and it's somebody who's like oh i'm in europe everyone here is coughing everyone here has that kind of cough yeah for sure like for sure in spain um a bunch of people did and on the flight back like i saw the whole plane was coughing on the flight yeah. back so I was like, well, it is what it is. If I have it, we all have it now. And if you have it, I have it now. It is what it is. Yep. Like, I feel great otherwise. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I have no other symptoms of a cold or anything. Aside yeah. this cough. Yeah. The only thing for me is I still feel a little tired, but that's from jet lag, I believe. So mm-hmm. I'm not really blaming that on that. Mm-hmm. Uh, which is weird because my last trip, I went to France. I came back with zero jet lag. Like, I came back at night and I slept the whole night, slept through the whole night. Woke up and then that was it. Like, there's no jet lag after that. Isn't there this thing where if you fly, it's easier to fly west or east because of the time zones? Um, I forget, you're but yes, you're right. Less likely to get jet lag if you fly one, one way over the other. Yes, for sure. Uh, I don't know which way, but I'm certain there is one of them. Yeah. Uh, but it's weird because flying there. Okay, so I guess now I'll kind of segue this into my trip to Spain. So, guys, recently for the break, I took five days, or it was a six-day trip, but it was pretty much like four full days in Spain. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was cool in terms of the jet lag because they all do kind of like a siesta thing there. Um, so pretty much like after 2 p.m., everything kind of slows down there. And then restaurants aren't open till 8 p.m. Yes. So, like, a lot of the restaurants aren't open till eight like some are open the whole day but uh-huh. they they like it's so slow between like three or four p.m to like eight p.m um like that's when they like you know fold napkins and set up for yeah. dinner and stuff or some restaurants literally just close after four p.m and they're not going to open till eight mm-hmm. um so because of that uh me and my friend who went on this trip pretty much went back to the hotel and just like took a three-hour nap every day 
swear that's why, though. <clears throat> that's why they do that. It's because they're biphasic sleeping, right? Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know if that helped or didn't help with my jet lag. Because in France, we kind of did something similar. But in France, I def- we definitely fucked up more. Like, in France, we definitely did not set alarms. And we slept way past <laughs> the time we should have. But in this one, we, like, set alarms. And after three hours, we, like, forced ourselves to wake up and uh-huh. shit. Um, but yeah, I don't know. The, the jet lag coming back this time was really bad. I'm not sure why, but I think it wasn't until last night I got like a full night's of sleep. Pretty much the other nights I would like wake up in the middle of the night for like an hour or mm-hmm. I would, like wake up too early. Like I normally wake up at seven for work. I'd wake up at like six or five. Yeah. Uh, which is kind of annoying cause I'm like tired the rest of the day. Right. Uh, so that was annoying for jet lag. Uh, speaking of my Spain trip, that was really fun. So if you guys never been to Barcelona, it's amazing, right? I mean, I wouldn't say amazing. It was a fun trip, though. Yeah. Um, and I talked about some of the things. So we went to a uh, erotic cop museum. Yeah. It was pretty cool. You saw a lot of dicks and like a lot of random stuff. Uh, one thing I want to highlight is that there was these drawings, and they're pretty much like old drawings, like back uh-huh. in the day, like the 18, 1700s drawings. And uh, they're from different cultures, right? And I swear to God, the France, the, the French people are the most creative. Like, they have these pictures of, like, dick dick ducks. Like, ducks with dick heads running around and stuff. Fuck. And they're, they're just trolling. Like, every other culture, they just have, like, pretty mundane shit. Like, where it's just, like, someone's eating someone out or someone's just getting fucked, looks right? Like this lady is not eating the other lady out. It looks like she's trying to climb back in her vagina. That's what I'm saying, right? And this lady's, like, pumping this guy's dick and shit. And it's, like, looking super enlarged. It's, like, very cartoonish and very hilarious. Mm-hmm. Um, there's this guy with a dodo bat killing a vagina monster and shit. Has snake penises that coming out. That literally has hentai tentacles coming out. Um, so this was the France one. And everything else, like the other cultures, I, I don't think I even took pictures of them. They're like very plain. They're literally just like a guy fucking a girl. So I was like, damn, props to France. They actually okay. are creative with this stuff. I wonder what was in the minds or what was the culture and the vibe like of the people who did all these drawings dude i, I swear they're just like us like like sex fiends like this when i saw this i was like way to go some kids or adult back in the day <laughs> went to some stone architecture and and like put a dick in the stone architecture and now we have it in the future and that's like dude i swear everyone every guy in the world would have wanted this when i was traveling around europe like years <coughs> ago Apparently, it's very common in, I think it was Italy and Spain, for there to be a lot of, like, phallic imagery. Dude. And statues in, like, the churches yeah. or hidden in the buildings. Uh, in Spain, there's just one building that was near a hotel that looked like a giant dick. Like, it was just a really phallic structure. Um, and you, we'd see it every night, and we're like, holy shit, that's a dick. That's home. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, yeah, there's a l- bunch of, like, BDSM stuff here. Um... I took some pictures of, like, really cool art. Like, I thought this was, like, a really, like... Like, obviously, this is erotic art, but it looks uh, nice. Like, just, like... Yeah, no ass. Yeah, or this one looks cool. It's, like, a very, like... Oh, that looks like Taylor Swift. Yeah, like a goth-style erotic picture, right? Yeah. Um, then there's some, like, uh, p- like penis in the in the nature. Like, this is, like, a sculpted thing. This is... I forgot what this like is, but it looks like a giant vagina. Yeah, that does look like a giant vagina. Um, but I forgot what it was. I didn't really read it because everything was in... Oh, well, not everything was in Spanish. Yes. Oh, so they have these, like, old toys. Or not toys, but, like, machines to, like, uh, turn... Like, not turn people on, but, like... This one is literally, like, a <laughs> feather machine on a bicycle pedal. So, imagine a bike, but instead of a wheel in the front, it's, like, feathers. And then a lady would sit where the feathers will move, and it would pretty much... Tickle her vagina as yeah. a pedal. Yeah, exactly. It's funny. Um, and then there's like literally the hardcore machine, right? This is the plow fucking machine. I, this is more calm. This is like more like recent type of stuff. What's this? Uh, I love glass. Actually, I don't know. I didn't really read into this one. I just saw the pl- plow fucking machine. I was like, wow. Yeah, it looks like a... Literally a plow fucker. Yeah. Um, and then I started seeing these toys. So these are pretty much vibrators from back in the day in the Erotica Museum. And it goes all the way back to the 1800s. And some of these look scary. Like, the fuck? I feel like these are the things that you would get electrocuted from, right? Um, like, yeah, this one yeah, literally looks like a, like a blender. Yeah. What the fuck? Uh, with a hand crank and all this stuff. Like, these are from the 30s. Oh, this one seems like it'd be okay. The thir- these, yeah, they, I mean. It's like a vibrating box and you attach it to the back of your hand. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah, uh, yeah, I guess so. I never really okay. thought about that part. But some of these look scary, right? Like these down here with like the cords and shit. Mm-hmm. I'm sure when it was brand new, it looked nice. But it yeah, just looks... they were like, oh my god, you have the newest vibrator? Yeah. yeah. Just bring out this bipod suitcase. I mean, one of them... That literally... one looks new. Oh, That's wait, no, 2020, yeah. Right. Like... Like this one down here, so there's one that looks like a massage gun, like you know oh, the yeah, ones you shoot. And it's literally just that. It literally just looks like a massage gun. Like I feel like the massage gun was just a transformation of this vibrator here. Holy shit, those but those dildos look like batons. Yeah. I'm not sure why those were there. But yeah, this is the newest one. So there's a twenty twenty Soraya Wave. Oh yeah. Let low come together. Apparently it's a super super high end vibrator. Uh but yeah, this mu- this museum pretty much just had a bunch of this stuff. <clears throat> just sex toys, sex machines. Just, I thought it was kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, when we went to the museum, it's kind of pricey, so it's like 12 euros to go, uh-huh. uh, which is about like 18, 18 bucks here. About, really? Yeah, about 18, 17, 18 dollars here. No, it's like one and a half. Sure. Yeah. Um, but they give you a glass of kava. You know what kava is? C-A-V-A. I, I think I'm saying it right. Oh. Um. So I didn't know this, but apparently if you get sparkling wine not from the champion region of france you can't call it champagne yes so that's the spanish version of champagne oh, from their region cool. that's like wagyu oh yeah yeah like exactly like wagyu beef or like hanasato beef or something like that um we went to a cable car ride that was pretty cool and unfortunately or fortunately for us the very first restaurant we ate in barcelona was the best restaurant in barcelona oh damn uh, so this was a restaurant we got with the muscles. So normally they have like paella and shit, but I was like, okay, let's just do all the tapas stuff because like there's yeah. a lot of restaurants with paella. We actually, yeah. me and my friend, got into a game where we just walked around and we try to find restaurants without paella because like every fucking restaurant serves paella. Yeah. Um, they all have muscles, right? And octopus. Yeah, they all have. Well, it's mostly prawn and mussels. Mm. Uh, I think rarely they have octopus because they have a different octopus dish. Oh really? It's called a Galactian. Or I don't know how to pronounce it. I feel but like I saw octopus like everywhere. <clears throat> they do have a uh, octopus dish, but it's a very like specific Catalan dish. A uh, fun fact for everyone: apparently in Barcelona, it's not just Spanish they speak; it's also Catalonian. Mm. Apparently, those are different. I could not tell. Um, but yeah, the first restaurant we went to, we pre- I pretty much got mussels. These were like the best mussels ever mm-hmm. in a marinara sauce. And then patatas bravas, like this is a dish I feel like is the most famous in the tapas. Right. In, uh, in Spain, uh, this was the best one. Like this was the best one of all the ones we got because they like super deep fried the potatoes, and the sauce they gave us was actually spicy. Your serving size also looks really big compared to um, the tapas that I got when I went. Oh, yeah, okay. like a lot of the places I went, the tapas were like half that size. Oh, yes, but this restaurant was just better than all the other restaurants. I feel like I didn't know this whole. Um, so they have a dish where it's just like a tomato jam paste kind of thing and uh-huh. they just put it on bread it's just tomato mm-hmm. on bread it's just super common there uh croquettes are very common there and they're very delicious um and we just got this random cheese i kind of regret the cheese dish because it's just cheese uh and because the hotel we booked has like a buffet breakfast every morning and they had this cheese there every morning. <laughs> <laughs> so i was like fuck why you? like it's pretty much it's called um it starts with the m it's some special cheese and they put honey and a one on top Ooh. And the buffet we went to has like honey on the side and cheese and walnuts everywhere. So it's kind of like, oh, fuck, why don't I even get this dish? But yeah, that was cool. Um, they also have a lot of places with really cool art. Like of all... Actually, I haven't been to much. But of, of France and Spain, I thought France would have a lot of cool art. No, Spain has a lot of places with a lot of cool art. Um, I just took a picture of a couple that <laughs> I liked best. Um, and they just have a bunch of these. So I thought that was really cool. <laughs> like there's just one with um, Mickey Mouse, but it's like a what's this called? Uh, a pug? A, Boston no. Terrier? Yeah, yeah, like a Boston Terrier face instead of Mickey. Uh, that was really cool. And then in the evening of that same day, we had like a shittier meal. Uh, it's not shitty, but it's like you had like the same thing. Kind of. So we tried their beer. Estrella Dam is apparently mm-hmm. a very Spanish beer. I thought it was very weak. I feel mm-hmm. like Canadian beers are very strong in general. Yeah, they're supposed to. Be and I think weak. Joyce kind of explained to me. She said that just because it's so cold here, it's like you get the stronger one because when it's warm, it's easier to get drunk. Oh. Like when you're warm and the temperature's warm, it's yeah. easier to get drunk. So they have weaker beers in warmer places. Um, but yeah, they have Estrella Dam. Oh, this um, one 
thing. This is probably my favorite dish. The Iberica ham or mm-hmm. Iberical. I forgot how to call it. Uh, it's pretty much leg. It's like a super special leg of ham. It's a very Spanish thing. They have it everywhere. They but it's slice it on the spot for you. Not this one, but I've seen so many. Like you just walk around a market and it's yeah. everywhere. And they, they have like a special machine to hold it in a specific angle. Oh yeah, yeah to yeah. slice it. I was like, whoa. And that's... a special knife too. Right? Yeah, I was like, that's fucking wild. Uh, speaking of octopus, they had this dish. This is the octopus dish. It's like mm. boiled potato, and then they put boiled octopus on top. They season it and they pour oil all over it. I thought this was very average. Um, I didn't really like it, so we never really got it after that. It's just, I don't know. I like very intense, flavorful things. And mm-hmm. only the first restaurant, I felt like, provided that. Like, every restaurant was kind of, whatever. Um, and then after that, like, the the breakfast buffet was, like, a really good spread. Like, it was sick that we had it every morning. Um, I'll show you the videos afterwards, but they had like salad, they had like yogurts, and you know all the nuts, like all the seeds, like chia Whoa. seeds and all that shit. And they had like old they had, like, bee cereal pollen and shit too. Um, I don't even know what the fuck that is, so I don't even know. Oh, chia seeds. They had chia seeds. They had a bunch seeds. of random shit. seeds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, a bunch of those. And then they had salad, and then they had like ham, like the same I Iberico ham. I always cleared them out every morning. Oh like they just God. had like a bunch there, and I just like took a bunch. <laughs> Pretty much every. He's back. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> Every morning, I'd have a giant <laughs> salad with a bunch of that ham on it. Um, but they have, like, eggs, bacon, all that shit, too. And they like, fresh mm-hmm. loaves that you just, like, cut yourself. Nice. Yeah. Um, I'll, I'll, show you, that bowl. I'll show you that video. Oh, this is cereal. I just wanted to know, like, okay. how different their cereal is compared yeah, to our see, cereal. Can I see? The cereal? Uh, this is kind of like a... Like cocoa puffs. Yeah, yeah. It's not that different. Or, like, a rice puff. I, I, I think their cereal is just a little less sugary. Uh, actually, okay, well, I'll pause the podcast real quick and you can see the video yeah so we just watched the video of their breakfast buffet what would you think of it Viv? looks pretty solid actually i feel like whenever i don't often stay at hotels that also have breakfast included but this looks pretty good compared to the ones that i did have uh, this this hotel was not cheap it was part of the uh, the costco deal i tried so i normally don't book hotels normally i do the cheap route like go airbnb and all that stuff Um, but I wanted to try the Costco deal to see how it was. Hotels in Europe aren't even that expensive, though, right? They're like $100 or less a night usually for like four stars at least. Uh, so for this oh, one, it would have been 200 bucks a night. Uh-huh. I don't remember if that was Euro or CAD, but probably... I don't know, actually. But That'd be expensive as fuck if that was Euro. Yeah, yeah. That'd be really expensive. Uh, but it was nice. Like they, It's like the room was nice and it was pretty comfortable. Uh-huh. Mm, not much to it um other than that went to a park their, their mcdonald's are exactly the same as our mcdonald's not much different had a couple paellas i feel like their paellas were okay it wasn't like oh my god this is the best thing in the world really yeah what? um i don't that know amazing i feel like it was a hybrid of like <laughs> what's that korean rice clay pot thing even bap yeah like where you try to get the sides kind of crusty uh-huh. and nice and the middle is like a risotto. Uh, um, so I didn't think it was that special. I actually felt like they were, the food was actually really expensive there. Mm, like every, cheap. every oh, meal cheap. was, I want to say at least 35 a person. 35 yeah. cad at least. So 35 cad would have been about like 20-ish, 20, 25 euros there. Mm-hmm. And every meal was at least that per person. Like, you couldn't get a decent meal. Like, you could get a cheap meal. Like, I think our last meal was the cheapest. We just went to a pizza place. Was this Guell Park? Yeah, Park Well. 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 Wait, did you also come to Barcelona when you went? Mm-hmm. <coughs> uh, how many days were you in uh, Barcelona? I was there for, I think it was four days, three days. Okay, yeah. That's sufficient enough. Um, but uh, in their supermarkets, they also have a bunch of the hams. Oh, yeah. There's, like, l- racks and racks of those hams. Uh, it's literally just legs and legs of ham. It's pretty sick. Um, other than that, we also tried a restaurant where it's like super local. Like they spoke no English. Like mm-hmm. they had an English menu, but they didn't speak any English. Like you have to <laughs> like point and stuff. No fucking idea. Yeah. Um, but again, like that didn't blow our mind. It was a good experience. It was yeah. like the food was really good. Um, but it wasn't like significantly better. I just feel like maybe my palate sucks or like, I don't know. I, or maybe my expectations was much higher. Mm-hmm. Like the one issue I had was like, it felt so touristy. Like I felt like. Really? So the problem I had and I'm just making a comparison here. When I went to France, there was always like a meal deal thing. 
where you pay like 20 euros, you get an appy, a, a entree, and a dessert. Mm-hmm. Right. And that's like, hey, if you can't afford like the a la carte menu shit, you get the meal deal. You still get to try some stuff on the a la carte without ordering like the full size of that. And it was possible. And I felt like because there was so much integrated local with tourism in like a lot of parts of France where they kind of had to have that. Right. Um, but I felt like in Spain, only like one of five restaurants had that meal deal. So you always had to order a la carte. And when you do, it's always like significantly more expensive. It's always like in the at least 25 euro per person range. Even mm-hmm. even tapas. Like if you if you went out to get tapas and you actually wanted to like be full, mm-hmm. I feel like you have to spend at least that much. If that makes sense. <clears throat> um, And it just felt like way more touristy. Like everything I did there was... So like there were so many Chinese and Korean tour buses. Really? Yeah. What the fuck? I and we got mistaken that. so many times. Like we would be in line to go into a restaurant and there'd be like Asians in front of us, Asian behind us, and they'd be like, oh group of six. And I'm like, no, no, it's like two, two, two here. Yeah. Yeah. What the hell? But yeah, it was like it was super touristy. Um it felt way more touristy than France, for sure. I didn't Every- experience this like at all. Oh really? Like yeah. you had a really local experience? Yeah. I mean, like, I didn't see like any tour bus or anything oh, like dude, that. Oh, dude, it was insane. Like, you couldn't. I we had to go out of our way to go to this one restaurant to get a more local experience. Oh, damn. because a- anywhere where you're in like the Gothic Quarter or the Elborn or the Bourne Quarter or mm-hmm. um even just a little north of that, it's all touristy shit. Like they're catered oh. to them too. Yeah, uh, like they I make it more expensive that. and all that shit. Um, so I was like, fuck, man, that's kind of kind of feels bad. Um, and then I think on the last day before we left, we went to Montserrat. So that's like, uh, Montserrat. never went to the Sagrada Familia. Oh yeah. Fine. That's also the last day. We did both of those. Um, so the first, like in the morning, went to Montserrat and that's where Black Madonna is. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you went when you went there. Black Madonna, it's like, I think the mythology is like, uh, something about a flash of light and then Black Madonna, a statue of Black or of Mary, of the Mother Mary. And Jesus was there. And then the the priests were like, oh, we want to transport this to this other area. to, And then we can build a temple around it, right? Okay. And then midway through transporting it on this mountain, it got really heavy. So heavy that they couldn't move it. And then so then they just built this monastery in the mountains here. Oh. Um, and apparently she's supposed to like... Uh, this is Black Madonna? Yeah, this is Black Madonna. Apparently um, she's like... A symbol of fertility and stuff so when people are wanting to get pregnant or if people are pregnant they come here to worship the black mandana to make sure they're you know madonna named after this i have no idea i i, I think madonna in spain is something else it's like the the mother of something or like mary or something like that right mm-hmm. but it's black because uh well i think it's just because like oxidization of the metal or whatever i assume but it's called Black Madonna. Yeah, yeah. Like when you go there, they call it Black. Well, if they they speak to English people, saying it's Black Madonna. I'm sure in Spanish it's slightly different. <laughs> it's and <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm sure it's not full blackface. Uh, and then we went to Sagrada Familia, so that's pretty cool. It's I think this was maybe more worth it than the Casa Batlo or whatever. Mm-hmm. So we went to this other castle, and pretty much all of this. If you guys don't know of the history of this. In Barcelona, there's one architect called Antoni Gaudi. Yes. And he just super crazy architect. He built all these things. And these people are all pretty much monetizing his shit now. Um, yeah, they built a lot of things all over Spain. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, and then the Sagrada Familia is like a super big... It's actually absolutely <coughs> enormous. Um, it's a big ba- ba- basilica with a bunch of towers. And it's still under construction. It's been under construction since like... 1903 or some shit it's done now no no way man so they said that it's their prediction is 2026 to 2032 which means they have no fucking idea when it's gonna be done if if, if you give a six-year gap of when it's gonna be done that means you have no idea when it's gonna be done okay i thought i heard news that it was done (coughs) no um so the sagrada familia is like 26 euros to go in so when they're done it's probably gonna cost way more because it's finally done like, I feel like I have not seen a picture of the Sagrada Familia without these cranes. Fucking cranes. Like, yeah. they have the cranes there forever. And the mesh around it and yeah. shit. It's there forever. I swear to God, it's it has never <laughs> not been there. Imagine one day you get hired to work on the Sagrada Familia and you're like, finally, I got a job for my entire life. 
Finally. <laughs> literally a lifetime. It was literally, I think it was started in 1903. Yeah. But part of it got burned down during the Spanish Civil War <laughs> shit. But yeah, it's, it's it was cool. Like the Casa Batlo, I don't know if you went to that one. It's like a castle with like nice ceramics in it and shit. Dude, that was like 35 euros to go in. Holy shit. That's like almost 50 bucks. Or that's pretty much 50 bucks a person. Um, this Montserrat was kind of a weird thing because it's like an hour away from Barcelona. So like I booked a little tour thing. So it was like 75 bucks a person, but they drive you there. You get like special access to Black Madonna. You get to walk around and stuff. Like I, you got a bus to go there? Yeah, like like a bus <laughs> brings you there with a bunch of other people who are part of the tour. And then you also get a free train ride up the mountains. So normally you could just take the bus all the way to that. But if you take the train ride up the mountain, you see a bit more stuff. Mm. Uh, and you get to walk around a bit more. So it's kind of cool. It's like, uh, it's. I think it's still worth it. But the castle was definitely not worth it. It was pretty expensive for like not much. Um, but yeah, in general, my verdict of Spain is that I thought the food was okay. Mm. It was good. Don't get me wrong. It was delicious. Unfortunately, the first restaurant I went to was like the best. So it was like all downhill from there. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, it's fucking expensive. Like more expensive than France. Yeah. Like, I, which I was surprised. I thought it would be like cheaper because they're like, it sounds rude, but I feel like they were a lower tier or lower quality country than something like France is what I would picture or imagine. Really? I heard a lot of people say that France smells like pee. Uh, I did not smell that. Joy said I she, didn't smell it. I thought France was amazing. Uh, it's only near the Seine River that you might smell that. But mm-hmm. I think they cleaned it up a lot because they're hosting the oh, Olympics, Olympics this year. There? Yeah. Um, but yeah. So I don't know. I thought it was it was so touristy too. There's like Chinese buses everywhere. That's so sad. Yeah, I know. So, I mean, it was fun that I got to experience it, but I would say right now in its current state, it's very tourist trappy. Yeah, that's um, so unfortunate. When sucks. I went, I thought it was amazing. It was like one of my favorite places that oh, I've yeah. ever been to. I mean, we also went when it wasn't warm too, so that might account to some of it. I don't know. Like, we, we didn't go to any of the beaches or anything. I mean, I'd assume that like the touristy areas would be worse when it's warm. Oh, uh, probably. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But uh, yeah, I did go to the beach areas too, and that was so freaking yeah. And then coffee shops are so nice. Yeah, I don't know. I just felt uh, it was all right. Like, the, f- the food was good, but it wasn't, like, mind-blowing. And it mm-hmm. was, like... Like, I feel like a lot of the meals I got, I would have got for, like, um, three-quarters of the price in France and probably better quality. <laughs> like, I actually... After going to Spain, after going to France, and after, like, living in the Americas, I feel like, oh, should I have a better appreciation for food now? Because, like, the French actually do it a lot better than everyone else, I feel like. They're just like qual, qual- just pure quality wise. Yeah, like ingredients. Like if you think about how people say like quality ingredients actually matter, that yeah. the first time I actually ever noticed it was in France. Yeah, yeah. Like they make something out of, I mean, something great out of like a good quality stuff. But yeah. they also don't fuck it up too. Mm-hmm. Like they actually make it really well. Um, but yeah, it was a fun trip. It was kind of one of the things where I had a week off from work during the Christmas break. And I keep telling myself this is like, I specifically chose like not to go through the typical blueprint of life of everyone else so I can travel more. So I mm-hmm. should travel as much as I can whenever I can. Um, so that's that's pretty much why I took this trip. It was like literally spontaneous. I have no like passion for Spain or mm-hmm. Spanish or Latin culture. It was literally just like, oh, I want to try this shit. Um, so yeah, it was fun. It was um, it was a fun trip. That's kind of what I spent most of my Christmas break doing. Sounds really um, nice. Yeah, and like just mega naps every day, like three hour naps every day was great. Like it was yeah. one of the trips where I feel relaxed after. Like you know some trips where it's like go 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 all the time. It's like you get really tired and shit. Like a vacation after your vacation. Yeah, but this one because if you if you I feel like if anyone took a two or three hour nap every day during their vacation, they would never feel that tired. Mm. As in like their legs wouldn't be tired. They could just walk all day, every day, except you taking that, you know, three hour break. I think it's also kind of easier to walk a lot when you're in Europe because everything's actually kind of within walking distance versus here. You would rarely ever choose to walk anywhere because it's just yeah. harder to get places and less convenient. Yeah. I think, walking. I think just like the combination of their transit system, Mm. makes it so accessible it's like japan like you can kind of walk or get around most places uh i do admit their transit is a 
actually, I don't know. I think Europe in general, it's um, it's good. It's a really good system, very well planned out. Mm-hmm. But obviously, like each trip is like two or three euros, right? And it yeah. adds up real quick. Whereas, like in Japan, you could pay that same amount to travel quite a far distance for like two or three euros. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I thought it was it was really fun. I think. Like their lifestyle is just so much different. Like eating so late and shit, mm-hmm. and like they're not much of a morning city. It feels like like when you're about when you go out in the morning, it's not that busy. So much more relaxed, right, and slower paced. I yeah, think. it's much slower paced. Um, it's not really yeah. Like the hustle and bustle comes about a lot later. Yeah, and it usually comes out at night too. Um, but yeah, it was fun. It was good. That was nice. What was the average weather? Like when you were uh, there, it was like twelve, like ten to fifteen during the day, and like five to ten during the evening. Too bad. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't a little cold. Cold. It was like sweater weather essentially, mm. right? Um, like I was being a DJ, and I pretty much wore a red hoodie every day on that trip, <laughs> and my same pants every day. I was like, I don't give a fuck. I was like, there's no one else here but me and my friend that I care about. Yeah. Um, I throw any clothes away. No, no, not this time because I barely brought any. I mean, I barely brought any because I barely even wore any. Like, I wore the same shirt. I mean, yeah, you were there for a really short period of time. Yeah, like pretty much in the six days, the only thing I changed was my underwears. I wore the same socks, same shirt, (laughs) same hoodie, same pants every fucking day uh, for the whole trip. I didn't like, well. You just just didn't sweat because it wasn't even hot. I, and I feel like the amount of walking we did wasn't even that significant. Like, it was like, I felt like it was a good amount of walking, but it wasn't hot. So, like, you never sweated. Mm, that makes sense. Um, yeah, so it was pretty chill. And, like, we took transit everywhere, so we didn't even walk that much. Mm. <coughs> we, we we pretty much grabbed, like, a three-day unlimited transit pass. So, normally, if something's, like, ten minutes away, you don't want to go through transit because you have to pay every time. If you mm. have, like If you live there or you have, like, a normal card. But we had the the unlimited cards, so we're like, fuck it, we're gonna take transit. Even if it's yeah. like 10, 10 minutes away, why not? Because we already have this card, right? Yeah. Uh so we pretty much didn't we pretty much took buses or trains everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. It was chill, it was relaxed. Uh would I recommend it? I don't know, it just depends. I feel like if people are really into the culture or if they know Spanish, fuck yeah. Like I, I think that'd be cool. Because it took us forever to even find good restaurants because all the restaurants reviewed on Google, I felt like were all tourist traps. Oh, really? Like all the high rated ones, it's like I was like I don't even know. Like we we went to one that was like decently high rated with like thousands of reviews. I was like this place is pretty average. Um, so what I end up doing is when I went we went to Casa Palo, I pretty much just asked all the staff there is like where's your favorite restaurant? Like yeah. where do you go and eat? Um, and then we went to some of the restaurants they went to eat, and I was like, man, this is average too, but it's not as expensive. It's like the. Food quality wasn't significantly better. It was about the same, maybe a little bit better, the ones they recommended me. Mm-hmm. But the only difference was it was just cheaper. So I was like, I don't know, man. Like, maybe my palate's bullshit and I just don't understand this. But yeah, uh, it just depends if you're really into that stuff. If not, I would still recommend France first, especially because there's so many deals now. Like, France? Yeah, to go France. It's actually really cheap now. Like oh, there's shit. like four or five hundred dollar deals. Oh shit! What the fuck? Especially all throughout winter. I I think coming up summer that all the deals are gonna go away just because of like that's mm. when they get busy and especially with Olympics happening this year. Um, but if you go, I think I swear between like <laughs> October to like March, you can go there for like four four or five hundred bucks. Or I mean, you could pay a bit more and not have like bullshit flights. Mm. Um. So yeah, it's pretty good because I think WestJet has like a direct from Calgary to Paris. Oh, amazing! Yeah. So that was pretty good. Um, that was pretty much my break. Uh, nothing else is new for me. Work's been yeah, average at best. It's like the first week back at work. No one's really doing anything. Everyone's yeah. kind of not really chaos, but it's like no one's even back yet. So. Yeah, not everyone's back yet, so you can't do some of your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, yeah, the rest, I don't know. I'll see for next podcast. It's more closer to that. So, okay. How about you, Viv? How was your break and your recent weeks and stuff? My break was okay. I was in Edmonton the whole time. If I'm looking back in my December, I feel like after my really busy couple of work months in like November and October, I had a really chill December when it came to work. Like I took off every Friday pretty much. That's good. Yeah, and I took off the afternoon of 
every Thursday and sometimes on Wednesdays too. Did you have like bank time? Yeah, I had a lot of vacation left over. Oh, nice. And then I also just like um, wrapped up a lot of my most of my projects within the second week of December. So then I only had one project left to work on to like to kind of just finish up on. And I just had to do some documentary stuff. Like admin more so? No, like I was waiting on some documents from my other coworker and from like clients to get back to me by the third week. But then after that, I was pretty much free. And I didn't take off any vacation after that. But because I was done on my projects, and I didn't have anything else to do. Yeah. I had like the rest of December off. So it was really nice. Really, really chill. When it came to work, uh, I went to Calgary at one point for a tournament, and that was really nice because we won second place in co-ed. Whoa. Yeah. Was it intense, or? Uh, the first place team was significantly better than us. We oh. kind of got stomped. Yeah. Like, I think we had around 12, 15, 18 maybe points versus their 25 when they won both sets. Yeah. Was the how, how did you feel the competition of this tournament was compared to the ones you've been to in the past? Uh, I feel like it was slightly easier than last time I went to this PRBC tournament because we just did so well. But I also feel like everyone brought their A game, and I think this tournament was the way that I played in this tournament was probably the best I ever played. Oh, nice. In general, like for serving streaks and for defense and just for like picking up balls and shit. Like, I think I played my very best and I felt so good because I got set the last point ball mm -hmm. when the scores were really close before we went to play off for finals. And there was two guys that were fucking huge and they... Mm put up a huge ass block but i knew they were going to do that because they kept doing that to me and so i was like okay this move i'm gonna make it look like i'm gonna fucking whip this shit <coughs> you know but i'm gonna make a smart play and just um tip it to the side of them and i did that and we got the point and it felt so fucking oh, nice, nice. the winning point that. and also we, it also felt like extra good because at the beginning of every single game or tourney i always pick out a spot or a try to or a play that i want to make by mm -hmm. the end of the games or by the end of the tourney and that was the one play i wanted to make right by the end of the tourney and so it felt so good to make that play and have that play be the winning point nice that's so good yeah we got silver medals oh nice and we got a hundred dollars to share within the team like which cash or uh it's a visa gift card oh okay <laughs> Which sounds pretty nice, right? Yeah. But then just last weekend, I found out that the women's division and the men's division got $600 for second place. Oh. And I'm like, what the fuck? Why mm. did co-ed get that much? And then I was talking to one of my friends that was playing women's, and she said it's probably because co-ed was significantly smaller. Uh. Like, the pool for co-ed was significantly smaller <laughs> than men's and women's yeah, yeah, yeah. alone. And I was like, damn it. Yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like, competition's yeah. harder when there's more people, too, so... Yeah, like to get up there would be harder too. Yeah, and if there's like a lot more teams that are paying for it, then that kind of makes sense. Yeah, but yeah, that was really nice. And then Noel came back one weekend, and so we hung out for a little bit. Had the our mutual friends Christmas party. Yep, that was really nice. And then I had another Christmas party. It was my dad's birthday. Um. I had a sister date with my sister, like a Christmas sister date with my sister. Oh, really? And with Carmen. That's cute. The, actually, for me, like, I find that I hang out less with my <laughs> siblings now just because they have kids now. Yeah. So it's, like, harder to, like, kind of get a hold of them. But it's nice because when I do get to hang out with them, I get to hang out with my nieces. Mm -hmm. But when I do see them, the whole point is probably to see my niece now. Yeah. Um. So do it's just ever, a little different vibe now. Yeah. Do you ever <laughs> feel like you, like, miss that bond or that? friendship or the uh, moments that you had with your siblings to just um, hang out. a little bit but i i kind of get it yeah. like uh they're starting their own life now yeah and it makes sense so i mean i slightly miss it but i'm f i understand it a lot it's like i kind of feel the same way i i would probably do the same if i was in their shoes yeah like like i've always told everyone this like as soon as i get kids like fuck you to everyone else like yeah. that's my first priority and then my family's my second priority and then everything else comes after right mm -hmm. so i don't really blame them for any of that 
That kind of makes sense. I kind of feel that way too, that like as you grow up, it is what it is in a way. Like in some ways, I find that me and my sister, we kind of grew apart as we grew up because we have completely different hobbies, completely different kinds of lifestyles. We just don't have a lot of similar interests and stuff. But then it always hits me whenever I see siblings get along really well. And I'm like, one day I'm, I might regret not spending as much time with my sister when I have the opportunity to. And it hit me the hardest when we were at Ian, Lo- Ian and Lorraine's wedding. And I saw mm. just how close Ian and his siblings were. Yeah, yeah. So I messaged my sister at that wedding. And I was just like, I know I ignore you a lot. Or I always say I'm too busy to hang out with you and stuff. Yeah. But just force me to hang out with you. Or just like always suggest to make plans. Even if I seem like I'm too busy or I like suck mm. shit at replying and stuff like that. Because I'm like, I deep down, I do want to spend time with you. And then so now whenever she's free. Yeah. She always like tries to plan something or suggest us to do something, and I try to most of the time. Ever since that day, I try to always say yes or make time for it, and it's been a lot. It's been pretty nice. Yeah, I think uh, my appreciation has changed a lot too. I think back then I was like, hell no! Like if my friends <laughs> asked me to hang out and my yeah. sibling asked me uh, asked me to hang out, I but I'm gonna I'm gonna go hang with my friends. Well, I'll see each other at home, kind yeah, of thing, yeah. or whatever. Um, so I don't know. Like I don't really specifically care for that but i do miss just the doing nothing together i think yeah. is the biggest thing it's just like just watching tv together or just like you know just you know i would be like sleeping on my sister's bed and she would be doing homework and just chilling or something yeah, like that exactly you kind of just miss those moments a bit more um but also i think like you appreciate hanging out a bit more too yeah. Um, so like I appreciate like hanging out with my family. I I think back then I would like a family party. I would go there, you know, say hi to all my aunts and grandmas and stuff, eat dinner, uh-huh. and then as soon as the cake's cut, I'm like dipping. I have something else to do or somewhere yeah, else yeah. to go. But now I'm like, okay, I'll stay a bit more and hang out with everyone. And I, I guess I would appreciate that a bit more. Whereas back then I wouldn't at all. Mm-hmm. Um. So yeah, I mean, I do see what you mean as in, like I do want to hang out with them, but a bit more like i'd rather just hang with my niece too now so it's yeah, kind of yeah. like i get what you mean yeah yeah, yeah. i get what you mean <clears throat> it's like uh you have to kind of find that kind of balance yeah in a way. I, I, like i know my dad wants to do a family trip soon huh? uh and i know i'd probably hate that <laughs> yeah to be honest like as much as i say i want to <laughs> hang out with them i know i'd fucking hate that so much I get what you mean like my my family is planning a family trip and they're like yeah. okay the four of us are gonna go because i have me and my sister and my mom and my dad and then i just straight up told them like i know i say this shit but i do not want to go on a vacation with you guys you guys yeah. go so it's just the three of them going oh uh, what why don't you want to i mean that i would kind of understand i think that would be a more fun trip than what i think my because like for my family it'd be very chaotic now because i have two nieces now yeah right so like to go anywhere it's gonna be so much more chaos and it's just like you can't rent one car now because there's so many of us mm-hmm. and there's like babies and stuff now, mm-hmm. right? Um, so I think the trip they're trying to plan now is a cruise trip, which is nice because I was like, that's great. We fly there, we go on a cruise. Yeah. Like everything's covered. We don't have to like go find a restaurant or anything yeah. like that. Um, but I feel like with just four of you guys, wouldn't that be like pretty simple? Like very. I mean, yes and no. It's because I want to go on a cruise around Asia and I'm like, oh. fuck, the last time I went on a cruise, I actually felt like I was in jail. Oh, they want to go on a cruise yeah. around Asia. Oh, I see. That's so yeah, yeah, boring. Yeah. And then yeah. one of the locations is Japan. And I know everyone seems to love Japan. And I've been to, to Japan three times. But every single time I've gone, it's been with either my like immediate family or with my cousins or with my sister. Right. And I just don't find it fun at all. So I'm guessing it's either because of the company that I go with or I just don't like Japan. So... Oh, I see. So there. So this trip, I just it just doesn't seem alluring. Yeah. No, I personally am also not a fan of cruises. But with my family, I would rather do that than try to like run around LA with them. For oh, example, yeah. like I would hate to do that. I, first of all, I know for sure they can't do Europe. I was like, you guys cannot walk like I walk. Like we oh, yeah, probably yeah. have to rent a bus or some shit yeah, and like ha- a tour guide and stuff like that, right? Mm. And then for Asia, it's kind of like. Uh, same thing like super chaos you can't go to japan together we probably need to like rent a tour bus and stuff yeah um so then the other option was like america so i was like yeah maybe we could do like i don't know like something super chilled like huh. go to arizona or something and just have like a chilled nice airbnb and just hang out yeah like an all-inclusive wouldn't, wouldn't be bad yeah like a mexico all-inclusive but that's the same thing as a cruise right a cruise is an all-inclusive thing I, I would probably do that with them but especially because there's like babies now yeah like, i don't want to have to like 
get them uncomfortable and stuff. That's true. And if they cry the whole time, it would be a kind of a fuss. But I thought going to Thailand with my family was pretty fun. Oh, yeah. Because the food was so good and everything. And we kind of split into two. Like, me and my dad would go do crazy shit. And my mom and my sister would always just sit there and hold our bags. Yeah. That was great. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, that's sick. (laughs) Yeah, that's what I did over the holidays. Uh, One thing that I thought was really nice was when I was celebrating Christmas at my cousin's house, one of my... Or my aunt and my uncle bought this new karaoke machine so we spent a lot of time singing karaoke and it's been freaking forever probably elementary school since i last sang with my dad and i would mm. say the reason why i love singing so much is because of my dad right and so it was so much fun and really heartwarming to be able to sing karaoke with him again and sing all these songs and while I was singing he would like give me pointers on how to sing this part better sing that part better so uh, that was a lot of fun dude at my at my family christmas party they also recently got a karaoke machine from costco i have no idea oh. um but it was so fucking loud i was like dude you guys are not that good and this is really <laughs> loud like really fucking loud um and it was just like chinese and vietnamese songs oh, so yeah. i was like uh whatever <clears throat> yeah it was so much fun and it was kind of interesting seeing um <laughs> There's somebody that we play volleyball with right? that's dating my cousin. So it's kind of crazy seeing like people from EVP at my cousin's house. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Surprisingly for my family, it hasn't gone to that yet, which is weird because me and my siblings Uh forever, if we date anyone, they would come to the family party. Uh But my little cousins, they don't bring their significant other. Either they don't have significant others or they just don't bring their significant others. Oh, really? I was like, oh, that's surprising. I mean, like, everyone brings theirs on both sides of my family. Oh. Like, on my dad's side, my mom's side, if you're dating someone, you just bring them. Yeah, like, for me, my brother and sister, that's what we've done forever. Yeah. Uh, but for my little siblings, they, or my, sorry, my little cousins, they, they don't. And it's oh. just, like, interesting. Why not? Yeah, I don't know. But they're also less, I don't know, they're, I feel like they don't party as much as people their age. Oh, that makes sense. So, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. I don't want to judge. <laughs> Is what it is. I also went to two raves. Nice. One was Get Together and the other was Inquisitive. Get Together was a lot of fun because I spent like pretty much all my time with Carmen. Nice. And it's kind of rare that I go to the same event as her. Yeah. So she- it was so much fun to be able to dance and sing with her and some of my like female friends that were there too. And then for Inquisitive, Inquisitive is this... DJ that DJs Chinese songs, yeah. and Asian songs. Yeah, Butch, was, Butch told me a bunch about it. So much freaking fun. That was like one of my favorite experiences because almost every single Chinese song reminded me of my dad and like the songs that he would sing growing up. And right. so I recorded so much of it and I shared it and I showed him afterwards when I went back home like the next day after. And he was like, oh my God, that's my favorite song. Yeah. That's my favorite song. And he was like, I regret not going. <laughs> that's what I heard from a lot of people too. Yeah, I heard it was like a really, really good time for fobs and Chinese people. Yeah, yeah. it was so much freaking fun. Oh my God. But it's kind of funny because Car- I also convinced Carmen to come to that one. Right. And she didn't have fun. She was so bored. But it's because she didn't know any of the songs. Oh, uh, she's super whitewashed? Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. Is, she getting, um, is she getting married soon? Yeah. She's engaged. Yeah. She got engaged last May, yeah. I believe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I heard about that. Yeah. But yeah, nice. Can we a busy summer for you again then? It is. We're thinking of going to Miami for her bachelorette. Oh, that's intense. Miami's pretty intense. A lot of fun. And then we're going to do it separately and then join it, everyone (coughs) together. Like bachelorette and bachelor separately? Both are going to Miami, but everyone's doing things separately until Uh, like the last two days. And then we're all just going to party together. I see, I see. Yeah, Miami's fun. Good old Trio 5. Yeah, a lot of fun. But otherwise, I feel like my Christmas and my holidays have been relatively the same. I took two weeks off of the gym because I injured my hand in that volleyball tournament. Mm. There was a ball that was going behind the other power. And her and I, it was like a last minute ditch save. Her and I went to dive for it and I crashed into her and I like landed on my hand kind of funny. And I pulled the tendon running through my hand for my index finger and my middle finger so whenever i like move my hand like this it hurts quite a bit right here oh i see whenever you like kind of make a fist yeah and like use any strength like i can't shuffle cards and do like the bridge thing oh so like dexterity yeah a lot of my dexterity with like moving my thumb or like this the main part of my hand got injured and so it kind of hurts when i lift heavy things or like when i like 
drive or when I like turn a doorknob or anything like that. So I took two weeks off. My hand is, I would say, probably like 75, 80 okay. percent better. But it's okay. still like I can still feel some pain when I move it. So now whenever I do any exercise in the gym, I've been using grips to take a bit of the load off like my hand. Right. But otherwise, everything's been pretty much the same. And I had a really good holiday. Nice. That's good. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. I'm glad we had great times, separate times, but we both had fun. Um, and yeah, no, that was a good catch up. Anything else? I would say that's everything. Yeah, the same for me. Pretty much everything else. Everything else will, uh, or anything else I'll talk about in the next podcast. So next yeah. one's going to be mostly about resolutions. So there's some cool plans and ideas I have. So we'll chat then. Thank you guys for listening. See Thanks. Ya. Bye.